That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Undina, the ninth theatrical feature directed by Christian Petzold, uh, which premiered at the 2020 Berlinale, uh, where actress Paula Beer won Best the Silver Bear for Best Actress, and IFC Films released the film theatrically uh, June 4th, 2021. Uh, I'm sure you're a fan of this director's other films. Yes, very much so. Would you like to name... Uh, well, couple. Petzold is, uh, he had a lot of uh, television films and some early documentary features. Uh, he broke out into theatrical filmmaking in 2000 with The State I'm In. Uh, he is part of the New Berlin, uh, or the Berlin School of Filmmakers, which I think it, had we had a conversation about that, Undina and its style might have made sense, but um, what, which the whole... Uh, the, the Berlin School of Filmmakers is all about uh, realistic studies of relationships. Anyhow, uh, it's kind of a pity you haven't seen some of his earlier stuff because he used to, well, until very recently collaborated almost exclusively with Nina Haas. Uh, and she stars in two, three of my favorites of his, including um, Phoenix, Barbara, and Yella. Uh, lots of Petzold's previous films are kind of um, borrowing heavily from previous films. Like Yella is kind of Carnival of Souls. Um, Phoenix is kind of a, a loose remake of Return from the Ashes, uh, that old J. Lee Thompson film starring Ingrid Tulin and Samantha Egger. Uh, Phoenix is phenomenal and is part of the Criterion Collection, I believe was released by IFC Films. I'm hoping that uh, because of IFC's relationship with Criterion, that the same will happen here. Uh, he switched gears in 2018 with Transit, where he first worked with the, uh, the two leads in this film, Franz Rogowski and Paula Bier. Uh, that uh, was a kind of a contemporization of an Anna Seegers novel, which I appreciated, but wasn't one of my favorites of his, but um, I, I'm, I've only seen it once uh, at Berlin, and I would like to rewatch it. Well, this film, is about a woman named Undina. Mm -hmm. She is a mythical sea creature, mm -hmm. like a siren or yeah. something like that. Okay, so we focus on her sort of whirlwind romance with a man named Kristoff. So Undina's played by... Paula Beer. And Kristoff's played by... Franz Rogowski. Okay. Undina meets Kristoff on the day her ex tries to leave her. Johannes. Johannes calls Undina and says, hey girl, meet me at the coffee shop. I need to speak with you. And says like, we need to end this. But she goes, oh, you know if you leave me, I have to kill you. That's how the film starts. Mm -hmm. So it pops off nicely. Um, she scares him enough that he's kind of like, yeah, sure, I'll stay. <laughs> but she has to go to work. She's a historian. Mm -hmm. It's set in Berlin. When she leaves work, she's kind of frazzled. She walks into a bar, or no, she walks to the same coffee shop, and a man who heard her give her little, like, historian talk, Kristoff, attempts to, like, hit on her. She rebuffs him. He ends up breaking, like, an aquarium and causing a scene, and then we cut to them basically in love. Yeah, they have a whirlwind romance. Right. But it's not as vivacious as... No, but there that. are lots of... There are lots of... Very quiet elements in the background. You can get into those. Sure. So they have this romance, but everything culminates with Kristoff is at work. He's an industrial diver. Mm -hmm. And there's an accident where he is de underwater without oxygen for 12 minutes. So he's brain dead in the hospital. Undina's obviously upset about that. And she is able to basically bring him back to life by sort of like leaving his life. So she kind of goes back underwater and disappears. Kristoff wakes up. We see him spend time looking for her. And then we flash forward two years and we see he's now moved on. He's in a relationship with a coworker. She's pregnant. And he goes back diving again for the first time. And while he's underwater, he sees her. And of course is rattled. Because of the work he does, it's being recorded. So he like gets out of the water, runs to go look at the video and sees that it wasn't real. But then the next day or that night goes back to the water, like screaming for her, looking for her, realizes she's not there and moves on. The end. Yeah, basically. Okay. I thought this was a very well done film. 
I, well yeah. shot, well acted. I think based on the synopsis, I thought it was going to be something very different. Sure. Something like that film Possession by... Uh, Zulawski. But it really is a... Like, the vibe is very chill, very straightforward. I did think the actor playing Undina is captivating. Mm-hmm. She's giving me, like, 80s Kylie Minogue. Mm-hmm. And I really liked Kristoff. I thought he seemed like a really sweet, cute man. I thought his acting was very strong. Yeah, I like Rogowski. And I think whatever you said earlier about, like, a study of relationships or something you said. What was that? About the Berlin School of the Underlying... I could see that. I... Yeah. Yes, but so that's all I have to say, I guess. <laughs> um, I, I definitely think I need to make you sit down and watch Phoenix. Um, oh, you're going to make me watch Phoenix? Huh? Gonna, oh, well, I, guess what I'm not watching. There was some gentle, <laughs> gentle coaxing to get this one in. Uh, but Petzold likes kind of these ghosts and phantoms haunting his films and playing with identity. I mean, he literally has a film called Ghosts, uh, I think from 2005 or six. Um, and, and this film is playing with that as well. I like that it has kind of an offbeat, moody, and mysterious tone, which I know I like more than you did. But I, I want to back up for a second because Undina, uh, as the uh, the folklore that she comes from, uh, dates back to an 1811 novel by another German writer, uh, Friedrich de la Motte Fouquet, and of course uh, has since been revamped in many ways, including uh, through Hans Christian Andersen in The Little Mermaid. Um, which, of course, divorces itself from some of the, the darker undercurrents of uh, this sea nymph having to go back to uh, the water uh, after the man that she loves has betrayed her. Um, she's this Undina as a sea nymph or as a water element uh, was actually first brought up in the alchemical papers of uh, Paracelsus. Um, so I find all of that fascinating. Neil Jordan did a film called Undine, which I couldn't stand in 2009 with Colin Farrell. So it, he, he's playing with familiar uh, facets of uh, folklore. Um, I think Paula Beer, uh, she's, you know, I have an affinity for Nina Haas probably, but I think she's quite fascinating in this. She was more of a ghost kind of haunting the periphery in transit. Uh, but I, I think she has nice chemistry with Rogowski. I, I think there are a lot of very subtle things going on that... Um, are even easier to pick up on a, a second time. When she first, she's tells Johanna she's going to kill him, goes back to the cafe, he's gone. She hears a whisper, right, calling her name from the aquarium. And then there's this little figure of this uh, industrial diver in the uh, aquarium. And so it, the film starts to set up this pattern of how both her and Kristoff are kind of remnants belong to different worlds, right? We're supposed to associate with him as a motif, as being with that man. I think she's associated with Big Gunter, that the catfish that he spies uh, in his diving. And, and then also, um, there's a lot of, you know, she had to memorize a lot of dialogue for all of these tours she's giving uh, in the museum and looking at models of Berlin and explaining kind of a fascinating history, uh, even the name of what Berlin means, which is a uh, dry place in the marsh. Uh, obviously, all of the aquatic references uh, are all over the place in this film. Um, but she's, she's giving these tours and we're showing that the different colorizations of the models are showing, you know, new architecture, old ex- ar- architecture. So we have West Berlin and the GDR, which is, is also another juxtaposition. But I like that she asked people several times to point us where we are right now on this model. And then there is a converse scene where she does that with Rogowski um, looking outside from in. Anyhow, I... Uh, Sorry, I'm rambling. No, I mean, I think it's very good storytelling and it's well written. I think the most interesting parts to me were actually her doing her job, like giving the history lesson and showing the models. And Well, and if you think of the, the scene in for Siren um, as drawing men to their ruin, he and his profession are, are kind of like, he, he's of the water and element as well and kind of messes with that. And then of course, and she doesn't, she's distracted as we were talking about, which is, she literally means she's supposed to kill Johannes. And I think she's sidetracked at that um, by this romance, but there's a, a really great shot. It's actually the poster for the film where she's walking with her head on um, Christoph's 
shoulder and Johannes walks by with the other girlfriend and they turn and look at each other, which is also very Orpheus and Eurydice uh, if we're talking mythology. I think well. that's what's missing for me is there is no tension when from the moment it pops off with her saying, I'm going to have to kill you if you leave me, it just becomes very sort of still because the scene you referred to where Undina and Kristoff are walking and they walk past her ex and he's around some other lady. I mean, the like it's like the tension of like, what is she going to do? Well, nothing. Then she does go to find her ex who's like in this big, beautiful house with that same lady and he's swimming in the pool. And she, he has his back towards her. Uh, what's the man's name? Johannes. Johannes. And she very calmly gets into the pool and goes underwater and approaches him very calmly like an alligator mm -hmm. and then very calmly rises from the water, grabs him, very calmly like covers his mouth, very peacefully dunks him under the water and he like silently drowns. Mm -hmm. And then she very calmly gets out of the pool and walks away. I just like, I think I needed a little bit more because I, I didn't get the ferocity in Undina and Kristoff's relationship. But I think that's that's the point of that folklore that she, he's almost messing with the her trajectory because she's actually he's almost drawing her away from her own element. So she's kind of sure all over the place. And that makes sense to me. That's why I think it's a very well done story. It just I it, I understand what you're saying. It is because there's another scene where the. And Dina wants to have sex with Kristoff and she's getting kind of wild and he's like, slow down. Actually, instead of having sex, I would love to hear about your day, basically. And that, it's, it's very interesting. Well, her, her love to me is like a destructive force, right? And then after that scene where she sees Johannes, he tries to get a hold of her again and says, look, I made a mistake. I want to get back with you. And that night she, she rebuffs him, but that night she receives a phone call from... Uh, Christoph, who is very upset and hangs up on her. Because he saw her with her ex at the coffee shop. He saw her. He goes back to saying, I, the day I met you, you were waiting for someone. Or who are you in love? You have to tell me. And when that when you saw that man walk by, your heart skipped a beat. Um, and then, so they get into a fight, and then the next day he drowns. So and, and she she's learned, guilty. But she learned that that phone call never really happened. So they're, they're kind of, they're, there's kind of like... That a, was confusing. Well, I think there's there's this shift that things are off for both of them because they're she's kind of a supernatural creature. We're led to believe. Um, there's it, a funny scene when Undina return. So in between Undina seeing her ex walking with the other lady and her killing him, Johannes calls Undina and says, "Hey, like." Like he wants to, or he sees her at the coffee shop and wants to talk. Mm -hmm. Basically saying like, let's hook up again. And while they're there, because early on in the film, she and Kristoff broke that aquarium. <laughs> the barista is like, what are you doing here? You know your band. He's like, he's like, well, she'll have a cappuccino. And he's like, no, she, no, 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 she, she won't. won't. She knows she's not supposed to be here. She has three minutes to get out of here. <laughs> I also really like the scene of the aquarium breaking. Yeah. Uh, how that was shot. The film, the cinematographer was Han, Hans Fromm, uh, who has shot, I believe, almost all of uh, Petzold's previous films. But, um, you know, watching it on a screener is not ideal. But uh, so I really am hoping for it. It's beautifully shot. I mean, I, I have only been to Berlin once. I think it's a beautiful place. I thought the film... Actually, the backdrop caught my attention more than the story. I also thought that this would be a this film's like a this feels like a very like artsy film, something that I would watch like at a film festival. Sure. It made me think like I did go to the Warsaw Film Festival mm -hmm. and the 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 mall that the films are shown in there's also like a historic building where the films are shown and it just feels very grand and I I thought that like watching this film in an environment like that would have felt very right. Sure. But I think sitting on my couch in LA. Oh, sure. I mean, my first screening at the Palace was, you know, it, it, more grand. It, yeah. Was, so, so no, no shade to the movie. I would definitely recommend it. It is very well done. Would I watch an, another film from this director? Yes, but not because you told me to. What else do you want to say? No, I think you would seriously enjoy it. I mean, okay. both Barbara and Phoenix, I think, are might offer a little more for you to chew on. I thought you were going to say both Barbara and Phoenix would agree. 
<laughs> what would you give this film? Uh, three and a half out of five. I would give it three and a half out of five as well. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> well, you weren't done? No, I'm done. Oh. <laughs> Just make it.